or more commonly defined as someone who believes in the oneness of God, which is monotheism. And monotheism is the belief in one God. This is one of the most important beliefs that Muslims have, monotheism. Islam, as well as Islam, Christianity, and Judaism also believe in monotheism. And all three religions, all three religions are called the monotheistic faith. So I'll be talking to you about Muslim populations around the world. There is over 1.4 for Egypt because you know they're Arabs and they also speak Arabic. But actually, 87% of the Muslims they can't speak or write Islam. Here are just a couple famous um, Muslims. Ibtihad Muhammad, who is the American fencer. She um she always wears headscarves whenever she fences. Yeah. And also, there was one incident where. She was trying to board a plane to get to one of her matches, but she couldn't just because she had a headscarf on. Keith Allison, who is the Minnesota's congressman, and he's actually the first Muslim to be in Congress. Hussein Abdullah, who some of you may know, he was, the Min he was playing for the Vikings since 2008-2011. And one of the factors in our lives, besides religion, like our race, our ethnicity, our political beliefs, whether or not we like pickles, etc., etc. So I'm going to be telling you a little bit about myself. I am mixed race. Woo! Diverse. My dad's yeah. My dad's from Pakistan, and my mom's from Europe. She's Italian. Yes. She makes really good pasta. So. <laughs> okay. So my nationality is American. Obviously, America. Seventeen seventy six represent. Okay. <laughs> My religion is obviously because Islam. That's why I'm with IRB giving you this wonderful presentation today. So I'm going. So um, the number is probably right now. Okay. So based on the fact that I am culturally American, speak American English, eat American food, and sometimes Italian. Um go to the American mall, like actual mall in America, I went there last week, um, to buy American clothes, you know, watch American movies, et cetera, et cetera. How do you think my religion affects the way I live my life? Interactive question time. Come on. How does it affect your life? Because we wear Saudi Arabian clothes, Americans can wear a hoodie, that's me. So yeah, so on with this. Now we're on to the hijab. I have a laser pointer. I feel so powerful with this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet you thought, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so hijab, or the veil, or the cover, or the headscarf. Who does the scarf that goes around your head? So, Muslim women choose to present their intellect and personality over their physical appearance. Should <laughs> be, huh? 14 years old, and I'm going to a center high school next year. Um, hi, my name is Hanya Salim. I'm 14 years old, and I'm also going to Wiseland High School. Um, one of the most important angels in Islam is the angel Gabriel, who is said to have brought revelation down to many of the prophets, including the Virgin Mary and the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, Muslims also believe that each one of us has two angels on their shoulders, one on the right side who records our good deeds, and one on the left side who records our bad deeds. Prophets. So, um, all prophets uh, wanted to pass the same monotheistic message, which is the belief in one God, and other messages like don't lie, cheat, steal, and be kind and generous to others. And these are just 25 prophets mentioned in the Muslim's holy book, the Quran. The first prophet, which is Adam, all the way to Muhammad, which is the last prophet, peace be upon. Um, many Muslims name their children after these prophets. For example, two of my cousins, their names are Ibrahim and Dawood. Ibrahim as in Abraham and then Dawood as in David. Um, however, Islam and Christianity differ in the way that they view Jesus. Islam views Jesus as a very special prophet born to the Virgin Mary without a mother or father, just as Ad without a father, just as Adam was born without a mother or a father. In fact, there's a whole entire a uh, chapter in the Quran dedicated to Mary, which is called Maryam, and it talks about uh, Jesus' miraculous birth, him speaking in the cradle, and how he's 
uh, wasn't crucified, but rather lifted up to the heaven, where he um, awaits a second coming down to earth. To be attentive things and has the knowledge of everything, and uh, he's basically written out your life, and uh, he knows everything that will happen. So the hadith. These are the collected sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, this is the second most important source. Uh, uh, source of guidance uh, for the Muslims right after the Quran. Um, so one verse such as uh, the world is green and beautiful and God has appointed you his guardians over it. Uh, basically what this means is it's like when you have a child you don't just throw it out into the world to protect itself. You want to care for it. That's basically what this hadith is saying. You want to protect the world and yeah. So the five pillars of the sun. So, the five pillars of Islam are the declaration of faith, uh, prayer, mandatory alms, fasting, and pilgrimage. Uh, to help Muslims, Muslims ac accomplish a moral personality, um, they, they, uh, the five pillars are basically certain, they assign certain acts of worship. So, the five pillars of Islam, they're like support pillars for a Muslim. It's kind of like how a building holds up. Uh, kind of like how pillars hold up the building, just like how you see back here when you may not be able to see it back here, but like outside of the dining hall, you see plenty of pillars that are holding up this building. All right, and so now I'll hand it off to my brother who will be talking about a, the first couple of pillars of Islam. So the, dec the declaration of faith. This is the first pillar of Islam. It goes, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. This means that there is no God but God, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last messenger of God. Uh, Muslims believe that anyone who says this, and believes in this, is considered a Muslim. Uh, prayer of Salah. Uh, this is the second pillar of Islam. Uh, not too many of you know this, but Muslims pray five times a day. And I'm going to be an eighth grader at Wyzetta East Middle School. So this first picture is a picture of the Shah Faisal Mosque in Pakistan, and it's the largest mosque in Pakistan. This next picture is a picture of the Crystal Mosque in Malaysia, and a lot of tourists like to visit the Crystal Mosque. This one is the... Um, this is another picture of a mosque in Toledo, Ohio. Um, as you can see, it has a dome and two minarets. And this is a masjid in Minneapolis, or a mosque in Minneapolis. Um, it has a dome and minaret. Um, and just some facts about uh, mosques are there's over 1,200 of them in the United States, and but less than 100 of them were meant for a mosque. Most of them were just buildings or like post offices. Um, and the minaret, um, usually most mosques have a minaret uh, these days, but a social justice within a society where the rich can support the poor so the gap between them does not widen. Uh, next slide. So that's basically what zakat is and its purpose in society. And now I'm going to be talking about fasting during the month of Ramadan. So the fourth pillar of Islam is to fast during the month of Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. Since it is a lunar calendar, it rotates around the seasons. So Ramadan moves back 11 days every year. Uh, now, Ram this year, Ramadan started June 17th, and I'm greater than the other. This is a, a picture of Hajj, as you can see, all those tiny dots are people. Uh, it's a really, really crowded place. My parents went a couple of years back and they told me stories about it and how hard it was to get to the Kaaba because so many people want to get there and touch the black stone which is supposed to, which is said to come down from heaven. Here's another picture of the Kaaba. So now I'm going to talk to you about um, the two festivals uh, during our Islamic year. There's Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Um, Eid al-Fitr is the festival of the fast breaking. Uh, we will be celebrating Eid al-Fitr next Friday. Uh, and if you come here, you will see that uh, we'll be praying 
earlier in the morning, and it'll be followed by a short sermon. And people they dress in their best clothes, and they start they celebrate after the prayer and the sermon. And people invite each other over, have a good time, uh, and kids get uh, money and gifts and new clothes. Eid al-Adha is the festival of sacrifice. Usually takes place during the time of Hajj, and uh, just like Eid al-Fitr, it's a festival where we pray in the morning and there's a sermon. Uh, except the difference between this and Eid al-Fitr is that uh, in Eid al-Adha you are supposed to sacrifice an animal uh, for God, and um, you're supposed to divide the meat up into portions for family and friends uh, and for the needy, and you're supposed to give that meat to them. And that's it. Thank you for listening, and we'll answer any questions that you have about Islam. First of all, I, they are my students, and they did a phenomenal job. They've been learning how to do the presentation for the last two months, so they actually went to a lot of local churches, a couple of them, and we also had a Meet Your Muslim Neighbor event at this uh, community center. We had like 80 to 100 non-Muslims come here and they did a good job at that time. Now they have done a much better job. So I'm um, very proud of you guys and you keep doing what you're doing. And uh, if you ever need them to come to your local churches or schools, uh, get in touch with Tamim or me and uh, we'll hook you up with one of them. Thank you. All these Ivy League schools, and they are very dedicated to the work of volunteering. I've talked to some of them, they asked for them like.